we need to um, work on things locally. So yeah. what we do here in Oregon or you know, throughout Oregon in the various local county parties um, is we help gather signatures for petitions that yeah. help help us you know ensure that we're uh, keeping our community safe uh, and making sure that uh, we're not spending resources where we shouldn't be spending resources mm -hmm. so right um, a question before we get to yeah. some of these um, again about the border mm -hmm. uh, did you hear that Kate Brown I, I'm not sure exactly where she was at I think she was kind of indifferent you know at first um, about the sanctuary city thing but as soon as she had a meeting with George Soros, she all of a sudden became a sanctuary city, you know, and um, proponent. Proponent, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you hear about that? Yeah, I think that uh, it, it's one thing to say that you know we're for immigration and welcoming people, but it's another thing to offer sanctuary to folks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a specific term that's used when someone's being persecuted or is under the threat of death yeah. or something like this. So usually you see that through political uh, political adversaries that are actually fleeing their country or their families are fleeing the country because they oppose some aristocracy or some dictator. Yeah. Uh, but now we've seen this sanctuary just means, well, just come here. We'll offer you, you know, mm -hmm. sanctuary. Sanctuary from what, you know? Uh, if, if the country is not doing well or there's not many opportunities, how is that necessarily a sanctuary, mm -hmm. you know? So. Well, in the Bible, the word the sanctuary cities, and, and I assume that's where it originated from. Um, a lot of things originate actually out of the Bible, whether mm -hmm. people know it or not. Um, but it's when somebody was innocently doing something that wound up in the death, or you know something serious against somebody else that they that it was complete accident, and uh, they were allowed um, under God's law to go to a sanctuary city. Um, to escape that, um, yeah. if it was done on purpose, and that there was there was judgment against that, but if it was done on accident, um, so. But again, that's again that's like like you say that there's a a threat or an imminent threat to mm -hmm. them or their family uh, that they need to seek sanctuary from. Mm -hmm. uh, just because they couldn't make a livelihood uh, being a fisherman or a net repairman, like you say back in uh, the early times with the Bible there wasn't sanctuary from that. You actually had to make it on your own. You didn't go to a right. sanctuary city to find a job. Yeah, yeah. You went, or you, another country, you actually had to have viable skills, and I'm not saying that the people don't, that don't come here don't have viable skills, but the idea that you come here with those skills is because you're coming here to make your life better. It's not to seek sanctuary from something. Right. So. Yeah, and it's crazy because, you know, it's not just Hispanics, you know, or friends from the south you mm -hmm. know but of course you know just to reiterate but I, I hope everybody knows but I don't think everybody does know this is that um, it could be Islamic terrorists that use Mexico and come through the border that way sure. and so um, you know what all, all I can say is anybody who thinks that that's okay is, must be listening to a lot of propaganda and the propaganda is out there yeah uh, well I think uh, what the the, the idea is is that we get so many people that are good people coming across the border mm -hmm. that we shouldn't stop you know this type of uh, we shouldn't stop and take check and do all these things put barriers up for those people because we're trying to find one person in you know a ten thousand or a hundred thousand that are coming across the border uh, it's not just that one person it's also those folks that actually come into the country need to be properly assimilated they need to you know our culture is different from where they came from yeah. and we you know we want you know it puts it puts strains on a lot of our institutions uh, you know the kids are enrolled into schools well those schools are not equipped you know uh, as you know they move into those neighborhoods and so you, you find a, a more and more of a divide in the school system those that are natural born versus those that are foreign and there's the ones that are foreign are struggling to pick up English and things like this or they have to take extra classes yeah you know so those those resources could be used for you know other things you know the programs that they're cutting back on and things like that so yeah. um, well there's American citizens with kids that are really struggling they're in, in, mm -hmm. in a class and the teacher needs to provide some extra work for that that student and instead um, she might not have time because then she has to um, yeah. help 
the, 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 struggling the bi well, the bilingual thing, yeah. you know, that, that, yeah. that is going to naturally Yeah, and those happen. are the kinds of resources. It could just be time. It could be effort. It doesn't necessarily have to come down to a dollar thing. Mm -hmm. How is curriculum comprised? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into, you know, having having that extra burden placed on the schools. So. Right, yeah. Well, you know, and when, when we have our ec economics at our home, mm -hmm. you know, your home, my home, you know, we have to look at our budget, see uh, see how much money we have coming in and see what we can afford. I mean, yeah. why is there a problem doing that for a nation? And, and we you know, I think most common sense people know that that is completely reasonable. And so anyway, what can we do about it? So locally uh, throughout Oregon uh, over the last you know, I want to say about last year or so, uh, there was an initiative petition, number five, that was circulated. Uh, it was to repeal the ORS statutes that uh, prohibit any funds or resources being expended, expended for immigration. So um, what this does is that statute does not allow our local police and our, our county police to actually check someone's immigration status mm -hmm. that comes through because they're not allowed to do those kinds of things. So this petition circulated, collected enough signatures, and is now qualified for the November ballot this year. So we need folks to get out, and we need folks to support that measure when it comes out. So do you vote hopefully. yes or do you vote no? Uh, you would well. That's the, it. Depends on how the measure is written. Yeah, because so a lot of times that it's written. The yes could be a tricky. no, and no yeah, could be a yeah, yes so kind we'll of thing. So yeah. On, um, so yeah. So once we get that, the so. measure and the title and mm -hmm. everything like that, we'll be able to tell people definitely. But watch for it. Uh, we wanted to just let let people know that the volunteers that made the effort to go collect those signatures really did a good job. Mm -hmm. They collected, like I said, enough signatures statewide uh, throughout the state to have it qualified for the ballot, and that's what was key mm -hmm. you know this is what we're doing to help ourselves and um, alleviate some of the pains that you know local law enforcement or county law enforcement can have when trying to uh, get actual criminals off of the streets mm -hmm. um, and this is know, statewide this is statewide oh, yeah okay. throughout Oregon and so, so right now if somebody gets stopped um, and they don't speak English very well and the policeman wants to check their status he can't he can't no the only thing he could do is just check them you know ch run their you know run them uh, their fingerprints through a fingerprint system um, if they have pr pr prior criminal history then the, they can you know uh, the immigration customs and enforcement can place a hold on that individual but the counties and the uh, local police have no way to hold the person until ICE can come and pick them up they have to wait until that date. If they can't pick them up at mm -hmm. that date, then they have to set them free. Mm -hmm. okay. And at that point, we're turning criminals loose on our streets. And we've all heard the news stories of, you know, the person that shot uh, Kate Steinle down in San Francisco or the person up in Portland that had been arrested 19 times uh, before he finally actually killed someone. It's that kind of mentality that we're protecting these criminals and whether we deport them or don't deport them, we need to, we need to have a, a process in place by which we can say we're safeguarding American citizens first, mm -hmm. and then we can help others that are coming mm -hmm. to our country.